Hi, this is Ashley Gronwald, and I am going to be talking to you today about tips to becoming a minimalist. And the reason I wanted to share this with you is because I had a friend of mine, Mina Davenport, who got me connected to this great YouTube channel. Um, it's Dawn of the Minimal Mom on YouTube. So if you want to go find it, all of what I'm going to talk about today, I learned from Dawn. So the Minimal Mom on YouTube, she's got amazing videos just about how to live a more minimalistic type of life, especially at home. And there's so many tips on there that I loved and I would call myself a minimalist. And so I really wanted to share some of these new ideas that Dawn has given me to even take this even further. And so what's all the hype about being a minimalist? I, I don't know that it's necessarily for everyone, but it gives me so much freedom to have less stuff in our house, less things to manage, less things to clean and organize. So I love just having less to think about really when it comes to things. And so I hope some of these ideas are helpful to you. They've been really helpful and freeing to me over the last couple of weeks that I've been listening to Dawn of the um, Minimal Mom on YouTube. So I hope you'll love this and implement some of these. Please share them. You can put those in the comments. You can send them to me directly. Would love to just hear your thoughts on what you're doing maybe to minimize your home. Um, I always say, I think I married a Maximus, which I don't think that's really a thing, but Jed likes stuff and he tends to keep a lot of it and collect a lot of it, which can be hard. And so we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more, but I hope that this is helpful to you. Um, and again, go and check out Donna, the minimal mom on YouTube. I think you'll love listening to her stuff as well. And then I will say, you know, she has been so helpful to me just to keep taking this to the next level of decluttering and minimizing that I definitely think Ellie is a little nervous. She sees me putting things in bags and says, where are you taking it, mommy? So I think that Jed and her are definitely nervous, um, but I think there's ways to help um, involve your family into it as well and for them to see the benefit. I always tell Ellie, we can go get new fun things but we've got to make sure we're getting rid of things as well and sharing those with other families. So sharing that idea that we're giving these to other kids that may not have things to play with. So that helps too. And so I hope that you'll listen and enjoy. If you have thoughts, questions, comments, please share them. I want to answer those. And again, if you're not a minimalist already, but thinking about exploring it, hopefully these will be some beginning tips for you to start the process. Or maybe you are a minimalist and you're going to take it to the next level. So I have a few um, tips that I'm going to share, 10 in total, and I'd love to know which one you try or if any of these work for you. So the first one she recommends is get rid of it if it can be replaced for $20 or less. That was revolutionary to me because sometimes I keep things just thinking, well, I spent money on it or I don't know that I really want to replace it. But if it's $20 or less, it's such a great litmus test to decide if I'm going to keep it or not. If I can replace it for $20 or less, and I haven't used it in a long time or maybe in years and I don't foresee myself using it, go ahead and donate it, get rid of it. Don't keep it, especially if it, it can be replaced for $20 or less. And maybe you make that dollar amount more or lower, but have a litmus test or something to gauge at what point you're gonna keep it. I think it is so easy in our country, especially to replace things very easily. So keeping that idea of if we can replace it 20 bucks or less go ahead and do it so that's the first one and so i did a a walk through my house and thought is there things here that i could replace yes and replace for 20 dollars or less i'm gonna go ahead and donate it and if i need it at another time i can buy another one um i had an example of that it was a big cake carrier that i bought for three dollars used because I thought maybe I'll make some cakes for Ellie's birthdays and transport it to her school. I just haven't used it. And I've had it for maybe a year or two, not super long. It is kind of big and bulky. I do have space in my cabinet for it, but I wasn't using it and it's sitting there. And anything that's sitting that's not you being used for me is hard. <laughs> it's just, it bothers me. I don't like things not being used if we have them. So that was a perfect example that I thought, these are always at the consignment sales that I go to for $5 or less, I paid three, I'm happy to donate it. 
So that might be an example that you guys could think through those as you're going through your house. Here's another tip. Ask the question, does it bring me joy? And maybe you replace that word joy with, does it make me happy? Does it make me feel good? Um, does it add to my life? Joy might not be the right word for you. But I did this specifically in my closet. And the question I asked was, do I feel good in this piece of clothing? And I found that I could get rid of so many things because I was keeping them just because I spent money on them, but I didn't like the way they looked on me. And I didn't like the way it felt when I wore, wore them, whether the fabric was itchy or it was a little too small or a little too big. It just didn't compliment me, but I was keeping it because I spent the money on it. And so going through my clothes saying, do I feel good when I wear this helped me to eliminate a ton more clothes that I wouldn't have otherwise. And I don't know about you, but for me, I have this deep guilt when I look at clothes that I'm not wearing and so I think I should wear them but then I don't like how I feel so I waste a whole day of not feeling great in a piece of clothing that I don't love because I felt guilty because I kept it so I love this idea go ahead and donate it give it to somebody else that can wear it that will look great in it and feel great so I want all of my clothes to bring me this sense of feeling good about how I look. And I think that's a great concept to keep. And that way you can help go through your clothes in a different way. And you can do this with knickknacks too. You could say, does this item bring me joy or does it add to my life? Or is it just another thing to dust? Is it just another thing that you're worried the kids are going to break? Whatever it is, accessories, think about it. So that was a really helpful thing for me that I got rid of more clothes. And again, you could sell them, you could donate them, you could ask a friend, come over. Go through my closet, is there anything that you want? Something like that. All right, tip number three. Ask people to give you and your kids experiences instead of stuff. Now remember, these aren't my ideas. I just think they're awesome. This comes from Dawn, minimalist mom on YouTube. So ask people to give you and your kids experiences instead of stuff, things that are just gonna collect, toys, Brit, whatever they are. So I love this idea because so often friends and family want to give you something on birthdays or on special holidays, Christmas. But what if you said, this year, could you give my kids an experience? And that might be for them to take them to the zoo or the park or the movies or have a sleepover at their house. But these experiences can have a greater impact on the child because they're doing something with someone that they love versus getting something that's gonna break, they're gonna get sick of and aren't gonna use, you know, maybe in a week from now. For my birthdays, I usually plan events and ask everybody to come to that, and so they're donating their time. They're giving me the gift of their time, quality time, rather than bringing me gifts, and I love it. Now, this does play into the five love languages, so if you haven't read that book, you might wanna read it, and there are people that gift giving is their love language or receiving gifts is their love language. I have people like that in my family and that can be challenging because you've got to think about that. For me, that's not at the top of my list at all. And so experiences because quality time is, is more enjoyed. But I think people want to respect us. And so if you could tell them, you know, the best gift you could give to my kids is just time with them. They wanna be with you, they wanna play with you, they wanna go with you to the different places that you enjoy. I know one year for Christmas, my dad got my kids season passes to Marbles Museum. And then I think he did the Life and Science Museum one year. So these are great ways to give you experiences with your kids without collecting stuff. So I would encourage you just to tell people that when they say, is there anything your kids would like for their birthday? You could say, yes, they would love fill in the blank and think about those places they'd love to go. And then again, just letting them know that quality time with them is more important to you than an actual tangible gift. So I love that. It just gives people some guidance around loving you, but the way you wanna be loved and that benefits you. So that's something to consider too, is experiences versus tangible gifts. All right, number four, don't keep it just because you spent a lot of money on it. And I think this is good. And this, is, I'm talking about a lot of money on it. The example Dawn gives is the Vitamix blender that she has. She said, I haven't used this for years. I don't intend to use this for years. I spent 
I think she spent 300 plus dollars on it. So she's just having it sit in her kitchen and she's frustrated by that. And so for her, it made more sense to sell it because she didn't foresee herself using it. So think about that. Should I sell it? Try and get the money for it as much of back that you can donate it, write it off on your taxes, give it away to somebody who would want that. This only makes me feel bad every time I see the expensive item I bought that I don't like or use and then getting rid of it takes away that negative energy and guilt. I did this with an item that I way overpaid for. I've not loved it. I've tried a million ways to use it. Nothing has worked. And so I just made the decision after listening to her to try and sell it. And then if it doesn't sell to donate it. And I have felt great ever since I made that decision because it's not in my house not being utilized the way I had thought it would be better utilized. So consider that. You might have an item like that. And I don't know about for you, but every time I look at it, I feel frustrated that I spent so much money on it and it didn't work out. So if you can get it out of your house and eliminate the stress of it, the anxiety of it, the frustration, I think it's a win. So consider that. Number five, don't keep it just because one day you might need it. And we've been talking about this a lot, but I think this is what is on most of our minds when we keep stuff, but oftentimes you can't find it when you actually need it later. So you have to buy it again anyway. So does it really make sense? to keep it if you're gonna actually not be able to find it anyway because you have too much stuff or it doesn't work anymore or it's broken it's deteriorated whatever it is so trust that if you need it in the future you can buy it again and again that I know money doesn't grow on trees and we want to protect the money we have but we also want to protect our minds and our homes and being free of clutter makes a significant difference on our emotional health and so something to consider that don't keep it just because you think you might need it and I will say for all of you that are not minimalists, my husband included, he gets rid of something and he's like, you know what, as soon as I get rid of something, it's like within a month, I need that exact item I got rid of. And I really think it's just that he saw it and removed, like he saw it maybe going through a whole bunch of stuff and it reminded him that he even had it, but I don't even know that he would be able to find it. So again, the idea is don't just keep it because one day you might need it. May not be able to find it. It might be broken. It might not have any value at this point. It might have deteriorated. So go ahead and pass it along, sell it, donate it, whatever it might be. You can get it again in the future. Is any of this making sense for you guys? Do you agree? Are you like pounding your fist at me? Um, or do you think these are really good ideas? I loved them and I hope that you can implement even just one and try it and then tell me how it goes. I know some of you have been texting me pictures of like your kitchen counters with nothing on them or different things that you're implementing, you know, reversing your hangers in your closet so you know which ones you're gonna you wear this year and which ones you don't so you know which ones to donate at the end of the year so please keep doing that i love it and we can share ideas with each other what works for you and what works for me um so that we can try and live more simple lives that really get back to what we care about which is spending time with people rather than managing all this stuff so i digress but number six it is not disrespectful to give away gifts from people you love now that might rub some of you the wrong way but I loved, she does a couple of videos on this. So if you struggle with, you know, being sentimental around a gift or concerned what people will think if you get rid of a gift that they've given you, um, or you've gotten all these gifts and you're really not certain what to do with them. And she does a couple of videos on those. I highly recommend them because it kind of helps navigate this. But what I took away from it is just because someone you care about gives you something, you're not required to keep it for the rest of your life. And if you don't, you're saying you don't care about them. Not true. This is a tangible item that is not the person, but you can begin sharing with your loved ones your desire to minimize your things and that you'd rather spend time with them. Like we talked about lunch dates, pedicures together, experiences rather than getting a gift from them for Christmas. Like in our family, you know, sometimes we do a white elephant gift exchange. Everybody brings something from their house that they don't want anymore. And then it becomes another person's treasure and we do a white elephant gift exchange. That's a really fun way to not get more stuff. And if you don't like what you get, you send it off to the Goodwill. Some people get things that they love and it can be a really fun game that you're still doing gifts at Christmas, but not getting a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need, don't want, and feel guilty about getting rid of. So that's a way. Or just drawing one person's name out of a hat. Um, and so each person in the family only gives to one person. 
So everybody gets one gift. And then on that, that same piece of paper with their name, you could give them a few ideas of, of what you want. So it could be gift card to go to the movies. It could be something that you specifically had wanted that you could tell them so that you're getting things that you'll, you'll actually use. So that's a fun way that our family has downsized our gift giving extravaganza at Christmas. So consider that. If you have any other holiday gift ideas, share those with us in the comments as well. We'd love to hear them. And then again, this may be harder with people, especially with family members that may have passed away that have given you something, but consider, she says, take a picture of the item or make a scrapbook of the item with the pictures of that person rather than keeping the item boxed in the attic or basement. Um, she says, I don't think that keeping fairly family heirlooms or gifts that you don't use in boxes is honoring the person that gave them to you. And I just think that's a really interesting thought. If you have a ton a ton of um, wedding gifts that you don't use that are just boxed up in the attic, if I gave you that gift, I wouldn't feel honored by that. So consider you know, just thinking about that and, and not feeling guilt of giving it a, a home where it can be used rather than keeping it stored in your house because you feel guilty that you don't want that person to feel bad. So number seven, next one is don't keep it just because you have room to store it. I don't know where you fall on the spectrum here. We have a ton of storage in our house and I love keeping a lot of it empty. So I don't know, a lot of people don't have that luxury, but again, I'm a minimalist, so I don't keep a lot of stuff either. So you might have a lot of storage, you've just got it stocked full, but just maybe think about, do you keep it just because you have room to keep it? For example, I had a sewing machine that I got into sewing for a period of time. I learned how to sew on this older machine and I liked it and I had all the tools that went with it. And then when I was listening to some of these YouTube videos, I realized I haven't used it since I had kids and I don't plan to use it. But I mean, I thought maybe Ellie would use it in a few years. But then again, at that point, it might be five more years old and it was already old when I got it. It's not, it's gonna need tuned up, serviced, all of those things. And so I just thought, why don't I get rid of it and get the money back from it that was originally paid for it, which wasn't a ton, but still I thought, well, I have room in my cabinets, I can store it, but why if I'm not using it? So that was freeing to me and I sold it to a really nice lady who was so excited about it and that made me feel great to not have it just being, you know, stuffed in a cabinet, not being used. So consider that. Remember that the things that we have in our home take up space in our mind and it's an inventory. It's a checklist of the things that you have and I don't need that space in my brain being filled with things that aren't being used. So something to consider. And I love the idea of giving it to someone who will use it while it is still usable. You know, that sewing machine was old when I got it. And so five, 10 years from now, it might not work. So I'd rather it be used by someone who can afford it because I was able to sell it for a really low price and get use out of it. So. Think about that and remember a lot of items depreciate in value over time. Not all, but a lot of them do. So a lot of times with my clothes, as soon as I don't like the way it fits on me or the way it looks, I try to sell it because I know the value and the styles change so quickly that if we hold on to it, by the time I would get rid of it, it's too late and stores don't even wanna, consignment stores don't even wanna buy it from me. So consider that. Number eight, be careful with forcing these ideas on a spouse who is not quite on board. Gosh, I feel guilty about this. And so I'm not saying that I've done this well, I have not, but early on, in our marriage when Jed and I, probably just a few years married, Jed wasn't home and I thought, you know, this is a gift that I can give him, which is going through all of his stuff, all of these things that he has kept for years and hasn't looked at. And so I'm just gonna go through all these cardboard boxes that he has full of stuff and decide what I think is necessary that we keep now that we're a married couple and what I think isn't necessary to keep and organize it and make new systems of how, how to, keep it and organize it and get rid of the rest. And I lost a lot of trust from him when I did that. So I wouldn't encourage that. I, I definitely have had, you know, we've been married 10 years now and I still have him very nervous about me touching anything of his. So don't encourage that. It definitely has to be a conversation and it might take time. Like he definitely has voiced his appreciation of the, the way I like to live, which is with less stuff, very organized and 
put away, but he also likes to have his things and not have me take them from him. So I think it's a process that we can't force on other people. And one thing, um, one of the podcasts I listened to said, you have to remember it's their home too. And that kind of was a convicting statement for me because I kind of look at it as this is my home that I'm managing and everyone has to live the way I want to. And that's really not fair. So think about it, live by example, show them the benefit of not living with more than you need. Um, And that might speak for itself, especially if you're able to find things faster and keep your space clean and not have to spend, you know, a whole weekend or a whole month decluttering. If you've kept up with it, they might really value and see the benefit. So live by example rather than just take all their stuff. And I will say I just listened to one today where the person on the podcast said, be cognizant to not just take your kids' toys and donate them. And again, guilty 100% because... It is such a fight with Ellie as I'm going through the house picking up things that I don't think she uses or I don't like to keep because they've got too many pieces or it just wasn't a good purchase. And she starts to panic and ask, where is that going? Why are you taking my things? I love that. I play with that. And so she really recommended like coming alongside your kids and and showing them what the benefit of what you're doing and that you can get new things and that you can give these to maybe underprivileged kids and isn't it nice to be able to share this with someone else and get new things and instead of just taking it from them so I have not done that yet I have definitely done it in secrecy and privacy and you know a couple weeks later Ellie will say where is my toy piano so I I need to think through that a little bit more because I have definitely just taken my control over the situation and jumped in. Um, So something to consider. Number nine, keeping something you don't use costs money. Now this was a kind of an interesting thought. So Don says when you store things in your home and you're not using it, it costs money to keep it in a climate controlled space whether in your home or in a storage unit, wherever you're keeping it. Now that might seem a bit extreme to you because you're like, well, it's just a small little item. It's not that big of a deal. But it is interesting if you think about, if let's say you don't use 25% of the stuff in your house. It's probably a lot more, but 25%. You're heating and cooling spaces for that 25% of things that you're not using. Now, don't get me started on storage units. As you can imagine, I am not a believer in those at all, (laughs) but... Think about that, all that space you're having stored and you're paying a monthly bill on to maintain things that you don't even have in your home. That doesn't make any sense to me. But there are some reasons that storage units are beneficial and necessary. So that's something to consider too. But she just says it's not just a neutral item. It's costing us money to have it in our home when we're not using it. And then again, like we talked about, most likely it's losing value over time because there's new models coming out or better styles, different versions. So selling it when it still has some value makes more sense. For example, like your cell phone. I mean, sometimes you just swap it out and trade it, but if you keep it and you're like, I might use it at some point and then two years down the road, like the value of it is drastically decrease like sell it when it has the value versus waiting time as it depreciates so keeping things that you don't use costs us money interesting concept and then the last one for you she says that this process of minimizing your home is like peeling an onion you minimize your items in layers so for example i have lived like this for a long time i would consider myself a minimalist and have kept my home this way but listening to don over these past couple of weeks I have found different ways to think about the things I own and whether it makes sense to keep it. And so it's like each different concept or each different tip or idea helps me look at my house differently and my things differently. So I've walked through it probably 10 times listening to each of these different videos and looked at things differently and come up with more and more stuff to move out of my house. Um, So think about that. I just have been taking a new inventory of my, my home and that whole idea of can I replace this for under $20 has been a huge question I've been asking. And am I keeping this item out of guilt or does this item bring me joy or add to my life or does it just take up space and add clutter in my mind? All those questions I've been using as I've been walking through my home, looking at different things. So it's a process that goes deeper and deeper as we dig into it. So it's okay if you're on the first layer 
and you walk through your house and you get one grocery bag of things that you think you could donate. And then you start going further and further with it until you have a home that you feel safe in, calm in, it feels simple, and you have the things that you love and your kids have the things that they love and use. So it's been extremely freeing for me to have a home with just the essentials and not all the extra things that you don't need, stuffed in places you can't even find when you want them. So I just ask you, what type of house do you want? Do you want one where you can find things, where you have the essentials, you get back to the basics of just spending time with each other versus spending all this time maintaining our stuff? Again, this is up to you and it is personal preference and personality for sure. But I have found that this is just a very freeing way to live that gives me time to do the things that I love to do. So I want to hear from you what types of things work for you. This I'm even doing for my birthday, have people bring, kind of go through this process of decluttering their home and getting rid of things that they're not using. And we're doing a birthday swap. So that's a really fun way to get time with your friends without buying each other gifts and bringing things that you don't use and sharing them. And then everything that doesn't get used or taken gets donated. So it's such a fun way. I've done this for a couple of birthdays. This might be my fourth or fifth swap. But again, it's just a way to share what you have with other people that might be in a season of using the thing that you're not and then taking something from them that they're not using. And so it's just a really fun way to share time together. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for my birthday, which I love to do. But if you have ideas, thoughts, suggestions, comments, I wanna hear about it, share it with me. Um, and again, thank you for joining me. I always love spending some time with you, just sharing what I'm doing in my life to simplify it and make it just count. Make every day and every moment count, you know, starting in the home, of course. So look forward to seeing you next week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.